In this video I am going to talk about the Lisp IPv4 unicast routing between the Lisp site and also non-Lisp site. In the previous scenarios, previous videos, we learned how we can communicate between the two Lisp site. Okay, Lisp site for example 1 and uh, after that Lisp site 2. But as I mentioned before, with the Lisp we can communicate between the Lisp site and non-Lisp site. Look at this scenario. In this scenario, we have a, for example, uh, we have a network. This is the R look space or routing locator space. Here we have EID spaces, as you learned in the previous scenario. And after that, as you can see here, we have one non Lisp site, the IP networks. And the goal of this scenario, this topic, is communicating between the, uh, for example, R7, R8, and R9 in the Lisp site with the non-Lisp site, VPC4. Assume that this is a network, this is a, a IP address, this is a computer or host in the net, in the internet. Let me to talk about a little what is the problem of us for this communication and how we can use uh, the new tools, for example, PITR or PTR to solve the problem. And finally, we will have the communication between the, for example, R7 and VPC4. You know that as the incremental adoption of Lisp occurs over time, there will be requirement for communication between the Lisp and non-Lisp site. Okay, no service even within an enterprise data center is turned on overnight. New services, hardware, and protocols are introduced in phases over different parts of a network. Because Lisp is a completely new routing system, it will take time to adopt it across an enterprise and the internet. Lisp designers understood the challenges and addressed them by introducing devices with roles specifically designed to interconnect Lisp to non-Lisp sites, such as uh, this scenario. Okay. Before delving into this device further, let's review the fundamental challenging of interconnecting Lisp and non-Lisp site, and then look at how to address those challenges. Okay. Given that the EID address space, this is the EID address space, is not is non-rotable and not advertised outside the Lisp site, and you know that here we have 192.168.2547 in Lisp site one, 192.168.2548 in Lisp site two, and 192.168.2549 in Lisp site three, and you know that the R5 as the a router connected to the non-Lisp site or the internet, for example, doesn't advertise these networks to the, for example, non-Lisp site to the internet. The internet doesn't know about these addresses, for example, okay? Because of that, how internet can send to traffic to uh, addresses that doesn't know about them. After that, we have another uh, problem, another issue, another challenges, and that is that non-Lisp site prefix are not registered in the Lisp mapping system. Okay, you know that here we have a mapping system. For example, R4 is the mapping system, and the internet prefix, okay, does not register on the R4 because of that. Assume that R7 needs to send at the traffic uh, to the, for example, non-Lisp site. In MS, we don't have any information about the non-lisp site because of that we have two problems let me to review these two problems given that the eid address space okay this address space is non-rotable and not advertised outside the lisp site and given that the non-lisp site prefixes are not registered in the lisp mapping system, how we can establish communication between the Lisp and non-Lisp site. Okay, now you know the challenges. We have two challenges. First, the non-Lisp site doesn't know about the addresses of the Lisp site because we don't advertise the Lisp site EID address space to the outside of, uh, for example, networks. And also in the mapping server, we don't have any information about the non-Lisp site. This is two, these are two challenges that we have for communicating between the Lisp site and non-Lisp site. The challenge is to establish communication between two routing domains, Lisp and non-Lisp site, okay? That have two separate database of connectivity information that are built using different control plane 
protocols okay uh, maybe you could do some redistribution but redistribution simply reintroduces the problem of scalability assume that we are redistributing the lisp site addresses into the uh, for example bgp and advertising to the other non lisp site this means that again we have re, uh, re uh, reintroducing the problem of many huge routing addresses and this is the problem of scalability imagine the redistributing bgp learned routes from a border router into list assume that here we have many many and addresses for example internet addresses and we are redistributing these bgp addresses into the uh, protocols of here for example ospf okay and remember that the bgp uh, synchronization command used to synchronize the bgp routes redistributed into igp like ospf as the internet grow ospf could not handle the bgp routes the same could happen with the lisp domain to have two-way communication, you also have to redistribute Lisp into BGP, which essentially makes Lisp to no different in operation from any IGP. And to complicate matters further, introduce another routing protocol, okay, into the routing protocols already existing in your networks. Network engineers know very well the challenges of two-way redistribution of routing protocols on various points in the networks and the challenges they bring in filtering routes to ensure optimal routing and avoid loops okay another obvious ap approach might be advert uh, might be to advertise the eid prefix these prefixes into the global routing table or our look namespace okay to enable global reachability to the eid this negates the entire purpose of lisp which is locator and identifier separation plus it it contradicts the goal of lisp which is to build a scalable address directory system if you continue to advertise provider independent eid prefix on the internet this status is uh, for maintained a non-scalable internet routing system okay the first mechanism to establish communication between the lisp and non-lisp site is to introduce a new network ele element a proxy ingress tunnel router or pitr look at here here we have a new component pitr let me to use it here pitr is the proxy ingress okay tunnel router what is the pitr what is the usage of the uh, for example pitr a pitr as implied by the word ingress allows non-lisp site to send packet inbound to the lisp site okay or lisp network toward lisp enabled site okay this means that you know that itr is using for sending traffic from the lisp site okay to the other lisp site let me write here we, uh, here we have the lisp site and we are using the uh, itr to sending the traffic from lisp site for example to the other lisp site or also non lisp site but until now we learned about only the lisp site here we have the new uh, device new component of the lisp we call it pitr proxy ingress tunnel router okay here we have non lisp site and we can use the pitr to sending traffic okay pitr to sending traffic to the lisp site okay because of that a pitr as implied by the ingress uh, word allowed allows non lisp site to send packets inbound to the lisp network toward lisp enable sites the pitr attracts traffic from the non lisp site to the pitr but advertising course aggregate prefix for the lisp eid namespace into the non lisp networks let me to talk about this look at here here we have the r5 as the pitr you know that r5 connected with bgp okay as you can see in the picture in the scenario to r6 r6 is the internet or is the isp router okay with pitr this is the pitr r5 is the pitr we can aggregate the networks of the lisp sites and using this aggregation for advertising the course aggregate of the uh, lisp site networks for example as you can see here we have 192.168.254 uh, 
this is the uh, this is a private IP address, but it's not important.